I woke up to these two very nice kitties sleeping with me. Today I'm conducting the first of the interviews for the editor production assistant job that I posted several weeks ago. So that's exciting, and hopefully soon I'll have someone to help me expand the Michael Aranda enterprise. Tim is having a really hard time understanding energy mass equivalents right now. It's hard to visualize is all I'm saying. What you got there? I think this is rice. Sounds like carbs. Tim has some good news. Um. I got an apartment. That was exciting! <laughs> Thanks for that good news! What are you eating? It was a fortune cookie. Wow! <laughs> what was your fortune? Uh, am I allowed to tell you? I can tell the internet. You will make many changes before settling satisfactorily. In your brand new apartment! Tim and I, since we've been talking about physics stuff, we've contacted the great minute physics champion sage person, Henry Reich. Um, anyway, my question is, uh, are there discrete units of space, or can things literally be positioned in an infinite number of places? Like, when you play The Sims, there's a grid, right? And you can only put your stuff on the grid. If you zoom in far enough in real life, is there some sort of grid? The, uh, the short answer is we don't know yet because we haven't been able to test it. The oh. long answer is lots of people are working to figure, like playing around with models that might that ha have that as a property. There's something called doubly special relativity, which was popular a couple of years ago, I think, which basically it says that in addition to a universal speed limit, there's also a kind of, it postulates that there's a minimum distance possible that like two things cannot be closer together than a certain amount. The main, like if you've heard of the Planck length or the Planck, Planck time, yeah. these are basically the distances, distance scales, like where roughly around that distance or size, like quantum mechanics and gravity both have equally strong effects. And so those are the distances basically where, where our current models for sure break down and are wrong. Huh. And so basically, Lots of people have postulated that there and have there are various theories and models that that try to you know make sense of things as if or to see what would happen if if space time is discretized and other models don't do it and at this point we have no experiments that actually tell us anything about any of these models on that front because like the scale at which these things are discretized is like the difference from the size of the atoms to this small like scale is the same as like from the entire universe to the size of an atom. Like it's, it's like such a huge order of magnitude that we are very, very, very far away from being able to test it. That made my mind melt a little bit, that last description of how small that unit is. Um, even if there is a smallest distance at which things can be near each other, mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean that they can only exist in a grid that is that no, yes, that, that's, that's like if you have like a, only a one-dimensional thing, then there's a distance. But as soon, it becomes really complicated as soon as you want to have multiple like you know spatial dimensions, because now it's like, is it a minimum distance or cause it's not a grid per se? Two electrons can be at the same place. Like if you think about an atom, it has like the, the energy levels of an atom can have you know you've heard of the Pauli exclusion principle, where you can have like a spin up electron, a spin down electron in the same orbital of an atom. The electrons can, in principle, be in the exact same place. So the discretization of space-time is not like saying two things can't be closer together. What it's saying is like it's not possible to describe for things to have positions in between these two places. So like when things move, they're actually like well, it's like a computer. When something moves on a computer, it goes like from pixel to pixel to pixel. It so it is like a grid. <laughs> well, but it wouldn't actually. There, the different models do different things. I don't know enough about the details. Like some of them are kind of just like. There, some of them are like quantum foam models, and there's all sorts of weird... Wait, wait, wait. Quantum foam? It basically... <laughs> basically, that's just a name that gives you the picture that, like, it's really weird. And, and, like, <laughs> and, like, and not a grid, basically, right? Because foam is, like, this thing that has very small, you know... Bubbles? Bubbles and things can interact in weird ways, but 
I don't actually know anything about that those theories, like the actual workings of them. I I know people who know a lot about them, but I don't know anything. We just spent like fifty five minutes in a Skype call picking Henry's brain. And he was gracious enough to answer our questions. Also, follow gonna, me on Twitter. at. I'm just going to cut that out. It's going to say, follow me at, and then it's going to be <laughs> me saying, I cut that out. You're a dick. <laughs> I'm starting to stress out over all of the things that I need to get done. I had wanted to have all of that Animal Wonders footage that I took on Sunday edited and uploaded already. But working on Nick's computer took up an extra two days that I didn't intend. So I feel like I'm a couple days behind on everything now. Project for Awesome starts basically in 24 hours. So I basically have to make the Animal Wonders video, my Project for Awesome video, which wasn't the original intent, but I'm running out of time. Last week I was so good about going to bed between 8 and 9 and getting up at 5 every morning. This week has just blown that to bits. I don't feel nearly as productive when I get up later in the day. But there's no use in complaining about it. I just gotta power through. Just gotta do it. There's too much stuff. <laughs> Hilarious.